All right, Kiss Army. Welcome to the Kiss FAQ podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. I'm putting this into your head. I hope you don't do any damage. This is a Kiss related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 126 of the KISS FAQ podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill, admin on the FAQ message board. Joining me today, uh, or hopefully joining me today, will be Lonnie St. Louis KISS. He'll jump in as soon as he's able. Um, also, Marcus Almighty Mark. And 69th Blizzard, Ken. Hello. Gentlemen, thank you as always, and thank you to everyone for listening last week. Uh, the video obviously was a bit screwed up as I was trying to use a new video editing package, and I couldn't find the freaking titles or how to do overlays, so I had to revert back to my old shit because I'm just too old to t- learn something new. So, uh, apologies, <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't going to re-up the, uh, the video. So let's just talk about some news today. Obviously, it's Thursday a whole bunch of stuff leaked today again this seems to be a weekly thing so i thank the person who stepped outside the circle of trust you're a bastard and uh you're gonna get what's coming to you in this life or the next um but for everyone else you get to hear some new shit today right um uh, our, <laughs> yeah. our friends over at i kiss my boots have uploaded the three rock and roll over demos they were recorded i believe august 1976 at davlin studios uh universal city in california during a break when the band were out on the left coast for the tour they did an instrumental of see you in your dreams or whatever whichever it is i know yeah. i always fuck yeah, up the title it. um a poll demo of Take Me, which has a pretty cool different uh, kind of drum um, pattern. I, I don't know. That's what else, someone else called it, but it does sound mm-hmm. right to me. Um, and also, the the key part of this is Gene Simmons kind of doing a guide vocal on a very much developmental baby driver. Um, mm-hmm. Universal, that is what you call a fucking teaching demo. That is the band figuring it out, not Paul Stanley sitting there with a mono recorder, uh, <laughs> guy, uh, you know, the, the shit that they E-cord. put on. Yeah, uh-huh. come on. The crap that they put on Love Gun Deluxe is garbage, you know, right down to the live stuff that they completely butchered. But uh, this stuff off Rock and Roll Over would have been perfect on a Rock and Roll Over Deluxe Edition, but you know what? You're too late to the game now. And it I've only seen a picture of the quarter inch reel, but there must be multi track somewhere of this stuff, hopefully. Um so who knows, maybe they could go back and mess around with it and ruin it. Um so so guys, you've had a chance to listen to that stuff today. What what's the high point for you out of those three songs? Uh what's your initial impressions? Mark, let's start with you. Just uh go free form on what you think about that shit. Um I enjoyed it very much. Um, you know, th- th- there was always, you know, hopes and prayers that stuff like that was around and about. And I guess our our rumors were true that there was things like that around. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, Baby Driver with Gene because whenever you hear somebody else doing a version of a song that you're so used to and having somebody else sing it, that's always something interesting to hear. And, you know... I don't think Gene did a bad job. Obviously, it's more like a example and a guide of it. But I still think Peter Chris had the better voice for it. I mean, who knows? Maybe if Gene did work on it more, maybe it would have sounded awesome too. But I like Peter's version, but it was really awesome to hear this version. My high point is uh, Paul's uh, Take Me. I thought that was really cool. Uh, the drum beat is a little bit more... You can tell that they were kind of working on it earlier because it's kind of a more basic kind of drum beat than Peter would end up doing later into it. But it's it's very cool. I like that there was, you know, full vocals and there were solos and stuff like that. So really good. It wasn't a really song. Great. You came back to us at the end of that. You went into static land. So, uh, yeah, I think oh, we, got, yeah, we got the part at the end that I uh, thought that was really great. So, Ken, let's get your, uh, your take on... We... Um, all right, so... Uh, I you know it's it's pretty cool. Um, I actually like uh, uh, "See You in Your Dreams" instrumental uh, the best on, on that. Uh, I just enjoyed hearing it, you know, because you hear things that you don't hear normally. You know, when you have the full vocals and all the background vocals going on, uh, you hear a certain instrumentation 
such as you can pay pay more attention to the guitar parts or you know Ace's part, um, and hearing it especially towards the end of the song, the little the little riff they do um, at near the end, um, you hear that it's like oh, I don't remember that you know, but I'm sure it's there. <laughs> I'll have to go back and pull out Rock and Roll Over and uh, and and really listen, you know, um, things like that. You know, you you pick up things that are you. you may have not picked up when just listening to the record so that was good uh take me seemed a little you know slowed down either it was intentional or it was you know put that way because it seemed like paul's vocals were slightly lower too maybe the drums are- uh, i don't know yeah so that was that was cool to hear and then yeah the baby driver thing yeah the the gene simmons i would have rather had a full vocal with gene simmons you know a real vocal similar to you know Peter's vocal. His is more ad libbing in here and there. You know, a little bit of this and that, um, just as a guide. But uh, it's all it's all pretty neat uh, hearing that. So now we've actually heard Baby Driver. And, and by the way, people, I only heard these recently for the first time as well. I did not have these. Obviously, I have had them before the leak, but um, only for a very short time. So these were as much of a surprise for me. I'd passed them up over the years. Um, just i don't know why i did but the, whatever i had at the time wasn't didn't seem worth it for three demos baby driver i love and i kind of love how you know peter has accused the band of killing his songs and now you hear gene actually directing the descending or, or e you know and he's kind of talking through what's coming next in in the song and i i just absolutely love that i thought it's one of the coolest things um to i've heard in in quite a few years actually so i'm you know on the one hand i'm pissed off that someone you know has gone to japan and sold probably sold the shit to make some money and now people are going to buy the silver cd don't buy it you know go up it's on youtube now for free go and get it there don't give your money to the bootleggers um simple as that the other parts of this cd that are coming out are I, I think one's attributed to SIR Studios, which would have been the pre-production tour rehearsals. And here, um, I'm going to play just a minute of Love Em and Leave Em with the intro so you can hear Paul's rap. And, uh, you know, well, here's off that. All right, you know, you know when we meet in the ladies' room, you know we love them and we leave them. Okay, so that's a little bit of love them and leave them yeah. off that rehearsal. I don't think anyone really knows the set list for Savannah yet, the first night on that tour, and whether or not it was actually performed. Uh, I did find a review for the show, and it didn't mention anything. So it's just mm. one of those great unknowns. Was it rehearsed? Like Got Love for Sale was rehearsed during the Love Gun rehearsals. And, well, we don't know if that was performed and that the... Um, assertion that almost human was performed in halifax in the first night of that tour there's no re- mention in the reviews of it either there's some uh, people who are at the show who say it was but are they misremembering and you know when set lists from uh, <laughs> f- from the rehearsals you know exist and it's not there and you know so whatever um very cool you know for many years, people have had the rock and roll over tour rehearsals. The ones that are going to come out on the CD are marginally better quality. I think they're direct off the reel or a copy direct off the reel. So they're about as good as you're going to get. And the SIR stuff, which has a, another take of Hard Luck Woman, you know, it, it's it's also there. So, you know, obviously you guys are going to get to have a listen to that later. You know, 
it it is what it is. Another week, another leak. Asbury <laughs> is apparently coming out as well. But you know what? That's just a kind of middle of the road seventies bootleg recording with Let Me Know as an encore. Big deal. You've heard Let Me Know off the King Biscuit Alive in far better quality than you'll ever hear it on Asbury. Um you know, you, you trade. You get shit, shit goes around, someone does something that they shouldn't, and eventually it gets out. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. Hope, hopefully everyone will enjoy it for what it is, and, you know, without saying F the hoarders, well, F the, <laughs> F the people who spend the money to get the shit. Simple as that. And now you get to hear it as well, and I think anyone who uh, knows about the kind of the trading circles and how things work in the background, you know, it's nice that other people do get to hear it. So let's jump into, well, actually, let's just see if Lonnie's here. All right, so late to the show. Lonnie, welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you. Um, so we've just finished a, a quick discussion about the demos that leaked today. Obviously, Baby Driver, See You in Your Dreams Tonight, and uh, Take Me. So you got to hear them as well today. So what's your, your opinion on that? What's your favorite? Um, pretty good. Um, I was looking forward to hearing them quite, I mean, especially that Baby Driver. I, you know, I've always heard about it. And, um, one of the here, one of the here, it, obviously it sounds very unfinished with Gene singing, but it's still, um, an interesting listen nonetheless. Um, the take me, I thought was actually my favorite. It was, it was different. It, it just gave the song had a totally different feel to it. Um, not that it has a bad feel on rock and roll over cause it's one of my favorite songs on the album, but it, I think it was just the most enjoyable because of how different it sounded. The baby driver, I think I was looking forward to the most. But maybe I was a little let down because obviously it wasn't it wasn't finished, um, just more of an idea with Gene singing. But but very good and very interesting um, and a big day for for Kiss geeks like us to get our hands on things like that. Yeah, people have already mentioned. Now can we hear Queen for a day or Mongoloid Man? Well, oh. be happy with what you got. <laughs> really, they're 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 not that great. So I'll, I'll just <laughs> leave that there. No, I, I mean, you know, we're lucky as KISS fans, as there is so much stuff, so much stuff still out there, so much stuff to still be discovered, which is, you know, I, I put ads up in those, uh, in the threads, you know, if you do have unreleased 8mm reels, live cassettes, anything, and you want to monetize them, reach out to me. I do buy a lot of stuff like that. You know, and if not, I do know people who do, and let's get it out there. You know, you cannot take it with you. Remember that. So, mm -hmm. you want money? Maybe we can make a deal. All right, let's get into today's topic. And, you know, we, we talked about doing a top 10 of our favorite albums. I left it a very broad, you know, 10 albums. You want to include compilations? You want to include live? That's fine. Each of us is probably going to approach this a little bit differently. Uh, so starting from 10, going down to 1, let's just run through our favorite, our top 10 Kiss albums. Sorry. Okay. You happy? You, you're We're not. not you're not going to make me any prettier shaking your camera. No, you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So starting uh, number ten down to number one, Mark. Why don't you lead us off with your first pick? Okay. So, of course, being me, I have to go a little more into this than normally. So I picked <laughs> my favorite album plus my favorite pressing of the record as well. Oh, so. Nice. Oh so, wow. I picked <laughs> so my so my number ten. Now, this album was re usually really low, never even in my top ten. But when I got this particular UK pressing of it, and I put it on my stereo, I, it was really really good. Not a lot of noise on it at all, and it, for some reason it brought the record up in my rankings because I really enjoyed listening to it. And that is my UK Unmasked. What? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, and uh, as you can see here, it's on a Blue Mercury. Oh, I was, was, was going to say, it didn't come with like a Motorhead album in it by mistake. And... <laughs> no. Because, and, I mean, like I said, it was never really my favorite record ever. But there are some songs that have grown on me over the years on it. And I guess once I got a copy that wasn't all... <laughs> that actually sounded decent and I could turn up on my stereo. 
and you know UK pressings I've always liked. I always thought they were pretty solid. They were really good with their, you know, with the way it's all kind of laid out. Their their frequencies are usually pretty nicely done. And I just thought that some of the songs sounded much better for it, and I enjoyed listening to this a lot more. So that's my number ten. Nice. Well, well, thank you for going outside the box, Ken. What's your number ten pick? All right, my number ten pick is um, what is it? <laughs> it's a it's a it's a kind of a tie. No, it's not a tie. Uh, I did this in Excel, so <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was going to turn out. But uh, ten is Asylum on my on my list. Uh, that was kind of tied with the, the next one, but uh, it it lost by just like a fraction. I did this ranking system. I did a, I did you have more time system. in your hands than I do. I, uh, <laughs> I did this afternoon. Um, but uh, I, I I ranked again by, I've done this before, you know, like the, the, the overall thing, the cover of the song, you know, the songs, whether there's a couple of, you know, throwaways in, on the, there and, and then the production, basically. So anyway, Asylum is, it makes the top 10, it's number 10. Good pick. I'm going to jump in there with my number 10 pick. And I did this very scientifically. I came in at about 2 o'clock this afternoon, and by 2.03 I had a beer open. I'd done my list. I'd picked number 9. I'd picked 9 albums, which I figured were my top 9. And then I said, well, which one's missing out of the rest? And I thought of Lonnie. So number 10, Revenge. Wow. I, I, I've got to have Revenge <laughs> in that top 10 because of what it stands for in 1992 as an album. Um, you know, we've talked about the album Ad Nauseam. And it's got some very good songs on it. It's got some very shitty lyrics on it. Musically, it's impeccable. Production-wise, it's impeccable. To not have it in my list would be morally and ethically reprehensible, and I'm not going to be that guy. Lonnie, what's your number 10 pick? I agree. Um, my number 10 is Sonic Boom, actually. Um, I surprised myself with that, but I had a, I had a hard time leaving it out. Um, and, you know... A lot of this is very personable. I think it's going to be personal for all of us is not only the songs on it, but what was going on in your life at the time and what that album means to you um, with a snapshot of that period of your life. Like, you know, I'm sure Julian's going to rank Asylum High because of, you know, he remembers it with, with good memories. Um, Sonic Boom, I, I have a hard time leading it out because, one, I really like the songs on it. Um, I like, and I've said this on the show before, I really like Sonic Boom a whole lot more than I like Monster. And I think, I think, well, while the cover may not be what people were looking for when they said it had the same designers rock and roll over, um, it's at least more than a picture of the band. And it had, it had, it was a little more thought out. I liked the album a whole lot. I really like majority of the songs on it. Um, I think the production is, is good. And I look forward for, forward to it for a long time, and it it still stands up for me today. Yep, and it meant that Psycho Circus wasn't the last studio album. So how? Which was very important. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So since you brought me up in Asylum, I, I'm going to throw my number nine pick out. Asylum. And you're wrong. It it started off very high. It was the first album I put down on my list, and with each other album I added to the list, it kept bumping down until we got to Revenge, in which case I said, I'm not putting Revenge ahead of Asylum. Um, so, number nine, Asylum. <laughs> and exactly for the reasons you kind of mentioned, because what it represents to me as a fan, my entry point into the band, blah, blah, blah. You've heard me say it on the shows before. Go listen to all the other episodes. You want to hear me say nice stuff about Asylum. Mark, you're number oh. nine pick. Okay, so... Much like how uh, Lonnie was talking there about how albums mean things for us at certain times in our lives and how they affect us, this album was something that when I got it the first time, I really, really enjoyed it. It's a frequent play on my turntable, and it also gave me versions of songs that I enjoyed much better than some of the studio counterparts. So, of course, I'm talking about Double Platinum. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. my U.S. promo version of it, which I'm sure Ken also has. Oh, yes, I do. And again, another one. Who's at a Speedway? 
Wow. Yes, Julian. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> Garbage truck. So that's uh yeah, it's a it's another one that I enjoy listening to. And uh again, these promo copies usually sound very good. I'm sure Ken can second that. And uh yeah, I really enjoy some of the versions of these songs better than the studio ones that were out earlier. So that's why it's my number nine pick. Good pick. Some of those songs are the ones that I heard first, and they're always the ones that stick in my mind. When the uh, other studio albums come on and the song doesn't sound quite the same, I'm like, I heard that one first on Double Platinum. Ken, number eight pick. Eight? Oh, my number nine for you? Sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh my. Skip it. Well, uh, let me tell you that, that I did truly have a tie for ten. Ten was the one that was tied with, it's my only tie in the top ten. Uh, is Dressed to Kill with Asylum. Those oh. those tied for me at 10. All right. So it's, let's go into 9. Let's go to 9, which is where we're, where we're really at. Um, number 9 for me is uh, Love Gun. And I think Love Gun got in there because, well, partially it's the package itself, the cover, of course. But it has enough good songs on it to to rank and get into top 10 uh, even though there is a couple of songs I do not care for uh, especially uh, Then She Kissed Me, you know, that one, come on you know, it shouldn't have been there period, um, and then uh, maybe another song so that's why it is kind of it you know barely made the top 10 as, at number 9 so the cover, Girls Girls in Leather the cover is great. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last last of the really, really, really great album covers. Lonnie, number nine pick. Love Gun as well is my number nine. Wow. <sighs> Crazy. Um, <laughs> one, of the, one of the first albums I had as a kid, as a young kid, on tape. Um, it's a great album. It's, it's great. And number nine for many of the same reasons Ken just said. It almost you know it's almost it's one of the original six but it's it's a, it's a little lacking with then she kissed me and you know maybe i'm not a big fan of tomorrow and tonight but but it's but the rest of it on there is is classic kiss and 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 songs that basically make us or any people kiss fans are those classic songs off of Gun. so that's my number nine all right so let's see if i can keep us in order here since i uh jumped ahead <laughs> in the last one my number eight pick Dynasty. And this album, I seem to recall, must have come pretty early on when I started getting into Kiss. And there's just something about it to this day, with the exception of that first track. And yes, I know that one of us listened to the album kind of backwards for the first time. (laughs) And I kind of wish that had been the case for me. I Was Made For Loving You is not what I think when I think of Dynasty. I think mainly Ace's songs. Um... Save mm-hmm. Your Love, primarily. Hard Times. Hard Times. Sure Knows mm-hmm. Something from Paul uh, and Gene. Charisma. Mm-hmm. You know, just make that a power, a powerful album full of punches. And it's not a disco album because of one freaking song. So, high up on my list, number eight. Mark. Okay, so <clears throat> number eight for me is a album that again wasn't really very high as it was never really low either for me but again when i got this particular press of it i really enjoyed it it kind of came to life a bit kind of jumped out more and it was out of the original three albums that came out it was never my favorite one but this pressing of it really elevated it up to the number eight status for me and that is thrust to kill and this is the Canadian quality records pressing of it and it's not the blue Bogart though it is the kind of hard to find Mm -hmm. camel one here in Canada which is very hard for us to find here for some reason on the Canadian Kiss Collectors Group that I'm in which is a kind of this private uh, Canadians only thing um, we, we we keep bitching about how we can't find some of these ones is it, on the camel isn't that, because, isn't that because it's too cold up there for the camels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not camel weather up here, yeah. So, uh, 
But yeah, it's it's it sounds really good. And again, it was one of those ones where I was surprised because I do have obviously a Bogart one and stuff like that, and it just something about this one seems seems to just sound that much bit smoother to my ears than the other ones that I had. So that's my number eight. And I love the songs on this too. So, and I mean, after all, it has to be about the songs. It can't only be just about the press itself. So, no, nice. I, I like the way you're approaching this topic, Ken. Mute. Can't hear you. Why not? Um, take two. Take <laughs> two. <laughs> because, you know why I muted? Mean because I don't think Lonnie wants to hear this one. So, yeah, number eight is uh, is Revenge for me. Yeah, Revenge is number eight. Um, I think because, I mean, I, I love the album. Uh, um, and just going back, I mean, it's the, the top. Ten, they're really close. I mean, in in, in quality and, and songs, and it's, so it's hard to pick a top one. But this this of course, tomorrow if you ask me, revenge could be up higher, it could be lower. I don't know. It all depends on the day, I guess, for me and what the mood I am in for Kiss. So, but revenge is a great album. It just lost points for the cover, I think, and. Uh, and just a couple of, you know, couple of songs. Um, so the production is fantastic, fantastic on it. So, but I mean, hey, eight's not bad. <laughs> At least it's there. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> it's there, and spit proves that you can polish a turd, Lonnie. <laughs> Damn, Gina, number eight for me is Dress to Kill. Um, again, great cover, um, short record, but very direct and to the point, and just great songs, in my opinion, start to finish. Um, actually, it was it was hard to put. It was very hard to put a list together, and then looking, I did it last night. Then looking back on, oh, is Trust to Kill really eight. I really like Love Her All I Can. I really like anything for my baby. I really like Come On and Love Me. I mean, that's three songs right there that are some of my favorite kiss songs ever so it would really be eight but i stuck with it at eight i'm you know there's there's some high points there's some lower points too but again it's classic kiss album classic kiss songs that make us all fans excellent simple simple as that okay so my next pick on this is one that's already been mentioned love gun and for me, Love Gun and Dynasty are kind of like sibling albums. They, they sound very much the same. They've got the same sort of material. Love Gun, though, just wins because of Shock Me, I Stole Your Love, um, Christine 16, for that matter, Almost Human. Yeah, it, so it, it's high up there, but it's really an equivalent with Dynasty, which is right next to it on my list. Mark. Okay, so my number seven pick is one that I'm sure most people or most KISS fans will have in their top 10, like, guaranteed. Now, I didn't have it in my top 10 for a long time just because of the fact that I got so burnt out on it because it was one of the records I got really early in my KISS collecting. And then something happened. I got a variation of this from Mr. Julian Gill, who I got it off of, and... And this was a Venezuelan pressing of this record. Mm. And what I loved about it when I listened to it was I took a look at the information on the Dead Wax, and side A was done by Alan Zentz, and then B, C, and D were done by Robert Ludwig. So it was a complete kind of oddball pressing of this record. So, And you can I can totally hear it, because Alan Zentz on side A had a much more crunchier guitars in front more with his way of mastering stuff and Robert Ludwig had more of the bottom end and had your kick drums on his stuff so you can really hear the difference in it so the record well, what I'm is it about, so the record I'm talking about <laughs> is Alive okay so and it, this is a really great version of it and just to show you here it's on the camel okay. again ah yes the camel Yes. And uh, yeah, so on, this is the side A. Is the you have the AZ with the with the flower on there, and you also have on the other side you have the 
master disc with the Robert Ludwig initials on it. And it's the one that I listen to now exclusively. I don't listen to the Canadian one. I don't listen to the Japanese ones. That's the one. I love it. And I thank you, Julian, for selling it to me. Well, if you want another 20 copies of Alive, I'm happy to accept it. <laughs> It's got 20 or still got 20 I, I still got some shit to get rid of, yeah, in, in between <laughs> selling everything. All right, so, uh, Ken, let's move on to you. Okay. Um, my number seven is is Hotter Than Hell. Um, mainly, it only drops a little low for me because of the, the production. Um, otherwise, if the production was high, it would have been close to... Probably, you know, top three. So, but the cover's great. The songs, obviously, are great. They, they still play a lot of them. Um, and they probably should play more of them. Um, but there's just a couple of songs on there that I I, eh, I can take or leave. Uh, probably on side two. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's, a great, it's still a great album. Uh, it's just the production we always talk about that that we would have liked to have had it less less sludge or muddy i guess you'd call it um in quality i think it could have been even better awesome lonnie great all right um seven for me is the original album um song for song it's a basically a greatest hits album we've talked about that before in the show um you know, first time I saw them, I think they played six of the ten songs off the album, and it's it it is what Kiss is. It's 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 absolutely fantastic CD or album, and I guess it, it as much as I'm championing it, I probably would have it higher if production. On, I'm not I'm not a huge huge fan huge huge fan of the production on the album, like the end of Black Diamond. Like what the hell is that? And um. Kissing time and that, but song for song though, I mean, it, it is the classic Kiss song. Is it do strutter, nothing to lose, cold gin, hundred thousand years, black diamond? I mean, my God, I mean that's it's a greatest hits just right there in itself. So, um, and and I guess maybe the reason why it's a little lower or a little higher, however you're looking at it, is because those versions of those songs. I relate to the Alive versions more um, going back to how I bought um, the back catalog. So, like, the first time I listened to Black Diamond on there, I'm like, what? I thought something was wrong with the CD almost at the very end because I didn't know what was going on. But song for songs, you can't you can't beat those songs on that original album. So that's my number seven is the original album. So when we started talking about this topic and, you know, whether we're going to include compilations, live albums, and all that... I can kind of facilitated about it and decided not to include any live or any compilations. Um, I didn't. But well, you the, said to go ahead and do it, and then you don't put any in there. <laughs> he yeah. told you guys to you're do not it. playing by your own rules. Just to mess with you. <laughs> the first rule is there are no rules. So because I didn't want to put any compilations or you know a live, which I could easily put a live as my favorite Kiss album, yeah. just because it contains so many of the you know, the very best songs, obviously. My next pick is actually Hotter Than Hell, because I didn't want to go with any compilations. When I started thinking about what are the greatest Kiss albums to me, Let Me Go Rock and Roll, Hotter Than Hell, Parasite, Got to Choose, Coming Home, Strange Ways, um, Holy Shit. You know, everything that you just said about the first album kind of applies to Hotter Than Hell, even though it's a sludge fest. And because of that, it's, again, I think, it, I, I don't know what number I'm up to right now. I'm on my third beer. Six. That's the only number that matters. Six. six the number of the beast. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> so, number six, hotter than hell. Mark, you're next. Okay, so, I, 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 for one, obviously, have already done a compilation in there, so I used the original premise. Um, but for this, now, for my number six pick, I had a little bit of a quandary, which I solved with this pick, because I'm a fan of the solo records, became much more of a fan of them over the years, and after getting the Gene Paul Ace Peter book, I became even more of a fan, learning more about it, and stuff like that. So, um, I have my obvious favorites, 
amongst the solo records. But I, I would lie to you if I didn't say that at this point in my life, I like a little bit of everything off of all of them. So what, what's the way to solve that? Very simple. The best the compilation solo. ever. I knew it. <laughs> the best of the solo albums. And not just any version, the German Bellophon. Because just like Lisa Simpson says, the Germans have a strong work ethic and their pressing plants have a strong work ethic. So obviously these are made really well and sound really well. And yes, Lonnie, you can roll your eyes. Germans are awesome people. And my mom is one of them, so don't do that. Okay? And... Uh, <laughs> So that's my number six pick. Best of the solo records is the way to solve all your solo prob- their solo album problems. So, Yavol, Ken. I am German, so, you know. <laughs> I'm half German. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> all right, so number six. <laughs> number six for me is Dynasty. And... Um, Probably because of the, well, it's kind of sentimental. I remember, I still vividly remember going to pick it up uh, at the record store the day it came out, and I've told the story again, where I went to the record store. It wasn't even in the rack. It was sitting between the aisles in a in the box still, and, the, and me and my friend both grabbed the copy out of straight out of the box. It wasn't even stamped with the you know price sticker on it yet, and. Uh, Though he had to go up to the register first, of course, and so, just to say, I, I bought the Kiss album before you did, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> but That's uh, not still in your crawl or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know what? I got one better on him is because we went back to my house and I put it on first. And I said, I played the album first. So there you go. <laughs> um, but though I played Side 2 first, as you know, because uh, I thought Charisma was the first song on the album. So anyway, but uh, I, I love that. I love the album. Um, all the songs are quality songs, really. You know, pretty pretty darn good. And the album cover was pretty good. I guess it could have been a little bit better had they done the straight jackets or whatever uh, from the photo session. But uh, it's it's a good, solid album. Even though it's even more you know just straight rock, not hard rock. Um, the songwriting quality is just fantastic. A lot of great, well-written songs. Next. <laughs> I'm sorry when you were all, when you lot were all going on about the Germans. I just had Monty Python <laughs> popping into my head. Yeah, and I, I was just going to say my closest <laughs> connection to the Germans was the Battle of Britain. But there you go. <laughs> Better back. Okay. There you go. Lonnie, let's move on to you. All right, my number six, which I'm going to be the first one to mention this, so it is Rock and Roll Over. And you guys are probably like, why is it six? six. Probably a lot of your guys is two or one. <laughs> um, it's fantastic, don't get me wrong. It's my sixth favorite Kiss album of all time, so it's going to be hard to badmouth anything um, for anyone, I think, this going forward. It's, it's great. I love it. It's what kiss is about it's the best it's probably the best sounding of the original six i think we can all agree on that that it's you know the first time it's the first time kiss really got their sound right in the studio for what the band really sounds like as opposed to what we'd heard on the first four um studio records song for song it's great from and and it's classic again with take me it's calling dr love ladies room mr speed i mean it's Great grooves, great riffs. Everything about it is is fantastic, and the production's awesome as well. Can say so I'm the first to mention it. I'm sure you guys have it all higher. Yeah, I, I think once we get into the top five of our, it's gonna be hard to say anything. You, you know, come on, it, it's the top five Kiss albums. It's uh, my number five pick is Lick It Up, and that's as high as any mm-hmm. non-makeup album makes it on my list. Which um, okay. you know, if you if you think about it, Asylum. Obviously, is a love hate album for many people, but in terms of if you if you could unsee that cover, I think in terms of its sonics, a lot of people would have it, you know, higher on their personal list than they obviously do. Revenge, it sound, lick it up is the best of the lot. Um, Vinnie Vincent, the best Vinnie Vincent solo album ever. 
lick it up. <laughs> I, I actually had it higher, but again, once you start looking at those top five albums, you juggle it around, and there's certain albums that you could just not uh, rightfully put it above. So, number five, Lick It Up, and that was before Paul started ruining the song with the long route. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. And that Who tribute yeah. in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah, do no the kidding. fucking Who song <laughs> instead of the Lick It Up. Yeah. <laughs> So my number five is one that my friends who are KISS fans and even KISS people in general are kind of surprised that I have it at number five. And they usually get that reaction when I tell them. They're like, really? That one? I, I, don't, I don't believe it. And um, again, the German pressing of it is the one that I go to all the time. The Bellafon German. Let's be specific, right? Um, like I said before, when we talked about this record at length, I love this record for many reasons. One of them is that it inv evokes an image to me of New York City, and that one has got to be Dynasty. And I've always loved this record. Everybody, when I tell them I love this record, they all say, but that's the disco record, dude. And it's like, well, dude, there's more to it than just that. You know, If you really listen to the record top to bottom, you'll know that there's a hell of a lot more to this record than one crappy, you know, disco-related tune. So I really love this record, and it's, like I said, records that I've always loved are the ones that stick in here for what I see when I listen to it, and this is one of those records. I don't know anyone who still uses the word dude in conversation, but... <laughs> Dude. In Canada, Canadian they do. Thing, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> don't, you, don't you guys say eh? You've never said that on the show. Yeah, I know. I'm a little disappointed. I'm totally disappointed. It's not, yes. a, it's not as used as you think it is. Okay. Eh? <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. Just go off and listen to some Anvil. Um, Ken. <laughs> okay, my number five is Lick It Up, the same as Julian number five and uh yeah it's it ranks i mean i just love this album um because it, it's so powerful um the production is pretty darn good uh the album i mean the cover is just you know it's kind of the perfect cover in a way um just putting them out there in the white background and you know hey here we are this is us now without the makeup um but uh still Pretty darn good songs, and again, I've said before, this is this is like a I said, Vinnie Vincent solo album with you know Gene and Paul singing vocals and stuff. I mean, he has so much. He's all over the album. It's just all over it, um, and just the songs uh, like Exciter and you know All Hell's Breaking Loose, Not for the Innocent, etc. Uh, a lot of great songs. So. That's why it ranks pretty darn high for me, number five. Excellent. Good pick, obviously. I agree. I concur. <laughs> Lonnie. My number five is MTV Unplugged. Julian told me I could use compilations, so I did. Um, <laughs> MTV Unplugged, um, not only is it very memorable to me watching it, um, on MTV when it aired on Halloween and seeing, G and seeing Ace and Peter come out on stage and, the, and you know, witnessing that, not knowing it was happening because it was pre-internet well, pre in St. Louis. We didn't, we didn't get the internet there yet. And, um, you know, witnessing that happen and surprising me, it was, it was fantastic. And it's like a snapshot I'll always, always remember is seeing Ace and Peter come out. I know what room in the house I was watching it and what I was doing at the time when Ace and Peter came out. And not only for that, but also that MTV Unplugged made me fall in love with certain Kiss songs all over again, like Coming Home, like mm -hmm. Plaster Caster, like Going Blind, and Sure Knows Something. And it just, it just brought those songs out and just made them stand up to me on a different level. And I, I still love listening to this album to this day, and I, it still gets a lot of play for me. Just if I'm in just in a, not in a mood to to really crank up my my speakers, but in a mood just to just to listen to the quality of musicianship that, that Kiss really is, 
MTV Unplugged is the perfect example for that, and I love it. Yeah, and and that album, you know, with Coming Home, is and Got to Choose is why I picked Hotter Than Hell. You know, wanting to not do that, but it's because of how they sound on MTV Unplugged that those songs mean a lot more to me now than they ever did. Really, coming straight off that the studio version. So great pick. I'm glad you included that. All right. So number four, Creatures of the Night. And again, it's one of those albums that I feel has to be high up in my personal top 10 just because of what it represents more than, you know, some of the material on that album is pretty dire. Uh, Keep Me Coming pops to head, you know, pops in my head immediately. And Danger are kind of substandard. But when you think of I Still Love You, I Love It Loud, Killer, Creatures of the Night, Saint and Sinner. Um, it's a really, really strong musical declaration, and I wasn't a fan in 1982 when this came out, and I can only imagine what it would have been like for a KISS fan to have gone into the store, seen that vividly impressive cover, to gone home, to put it on the deck or in their 8-track or whatever, and to have had that music come blasting out of their speakers after suffering through the Elder and Unmasked and to a certain extent Dynasty. Holy shit, they were back. So for Johnny Come Lately, yes, I still may see Bruce Kulick on the cover from the 85. Yes. Creatures <laughs> of the freaking... And I may still think that Killer should be the second song on the album. Uh, <laughs> right. But, right. The, but there you go. A, a good album is a good album is a good album. So, Creatures. Mark. Okay, so this record, again, is one of those ones that I remember vividly hearing it the first time. I was going to band rehearsal with my friend who was in the, my band with me, another guitar player, and he put in this CD, and he played it, and it's just like, wow. I remember we, it was, we were in a big snowstorm going to our rehearsal, listening to it. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is awesome. And he's like, dude, check it out, man. So I looked at it, and I thought it was a great CD. I got it years later when we found out that they were going to re release the catalog on vinyl. I was so anxious to get this one on vinyl, and then they went ahead and fucked it up. But because of that, I went out and hunted for a non reissue version of it. And like Lonnie, my uh, Lonnie, like Julian, my pick is Creatures of the Night. And this is a Brazilian pressing of it. So. No screw ups here. They no, did it no, right. no. I heard the Brazilian pressing has Vinny on the cover. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, and it just surfaced last week. It's in blue vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> but this this album, I, I love it. I mean, everything about this record has gotten better for me. And like I, as through the years, as I've gotten into more into sound production and stuff like that, this record meant even more because of that. I mean, just the the stuff that they did to make those drums sound the way they did, just the overall production of it, just the songwriting was great. And to think that how many people were involved in this record and what kind of a shitstorm was going on with them personally, to make that this good a record in those times, my hat's off to you, gentlemen. No, well, the album does represent the auditions, that's for sure. And uh, who, who was the engineer who did the drums? Nico Bolas, I think it was. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. Absolutely stunning. Ken, what's your uh, number four pick? Four. Yeah. Four pick for me is the the debut album, Kiss album. Um, of course, just great songs. They, they played, you know, most of the album today in concert. Um, and even, I guess you talk about Love Theme from Kiss, that's kind of a throwaway on there, but it still ranks ranks high. The song, just the songs themselves on that album, are great. Um, the cover was pretty good out, you know, pretty good cover. Yeah, it could have been a little better, but uh, it still, you know, showed. Hey, we're a makeup band, you know, and uh, the production was, you know, could have been a little bit better, but it was pretty, pretty darn good. It's better than Hotter Than Hell, that's for sure, um, as far as production. So. It's it's a great. I remember cranking it up, and there's a lot of low end on it. Uh, I remember, and I used to crank up things like you know, Cold Gin and Firehouse, and you just feel that 
<laughs> I remember it through my speakers uh, when I was young and did that. But uh, it's a great album, so yeah, it has to be has to be high. Agreed, Lonnie. My number four is Destroyer. Ugh. I knew it. Uh-oh. Didn't make uh, those marks, Ted. <laughs> For all things Canadian, you hate Bob Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, again, as I mentioned with when I talked about the original album, again, song for song, the first time I saw them, there's nine songs on here. They played six of them the first time I saw them on the reunion tour. Um, song for song. it's it's Again, it's the songs that make me and most people and more importantly, I guess the casual fans, the songs that make the casual fan kiss fans are the songs that are on here. Detroit Rock City, King of Nighttime World, God of Thunder, Beth, Do You Love Me, Shout It Out Loud. I mean, they're, they're staples in the kiss catalog. And as much as I would want them to play King of the Nighttime World and they don't, they're all staples in the, in the, in the kiss show today. Um, except for maybe King of the Nighttime World, which they play Flaming Youth instead now. So, sweet pain. I'm sorry, sweet pain. Thank you. You don't like sweet pain, but <laughs> other than sweet pain, it's a great album, and it, it is what makes me. It's what makes me a Kiss fan. It's it, it's actually my introduction to Kiss was Destroyer, and that's one another reason why I rank it um, high in my list because my brother had a cassette of Destroyer, and it's the first thing I ever heard by the band. <laughs> And so it's 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 very special to me. Well, number three for me, Destroyer. There, there you go, Mark. It, it, <laughs> it's not going to get me off anyone's shit list for shit list for life. But uh, come on, for the exact same reason, Lonnie. There's so many good songs on that album, but it's not really a Kiss album. If you really think about it, it's more like a ugly dude wearing a nice suit it's like an ugly chick with beer goggles it ugly ugly chick of makeup it is not kiss kiss is rough and ready kiss is not that polished kiss is not a you know a, a constructed over thought out over polished diamond amen but amen. for what it's what it stretched them to be it really has to be respected, Mark. Respected. Because <laughs> Detroit Rock City, King of the Nighttime World, Flaming Youth, those are good fucking songs, with or without Bob Ezrin's magic. Simple as that. Um, there, I said it. I was trying not to fucking say it. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've been, I've been reading the comments on YouTube. So uh, there, we, there we go. Mark, let's move on to you. Okay, so my number three is a record that I'm people will be surprised probably that's not near the number one spot for me, but it's a record I love. I listen to it at least once a week, every week, whenever I go on tour. This is this has gone come come with me everywhere: California, Europe, America. I've never left home without a few CDs, and this is one of them. And now we're going to show you my Canadian pressing of this record. Drum roll. And that is <laughs> Asylum. Oh. oh, holy shit. Uh, I that high up? Absolutely, I absolutely love this record still to this day. I listen to it every week. Every week. There's a Canadian. On Tuesdays. That's, that's uh, a better label. <laughs> that is the more common version of the Canadian label. Do you have the yeah, other one? it is. No, I don't. But I've been looking. The, our Canadian club people have been looking for a blue one for me. So I'll get one, though. But this this one, I don't know. Just when I'm in the car and I'm far away from home, there's nothing like hearing, you know, King of the Mountain or Who Wants to Be Lonely or these songs. I, I mean, I love this album. And when I'm when on tour and stuff like that, for, for whatever reason, when I put on the headphones and listen to it even when I'm on a plane or something it just reminds me of being home with my friends partying because we partied a lot and listened to this record a whole ton then even before I started touring so 
this album is firmly embedded here forever, and I love it. I don't care what anybody says about the cover. This is my number three. It should be maybe a bit higher, but you'll see what the other ones are. Righteous. Jesus. I hear you. I hear you, Mark. Can't complain. Ken. Yeah, I surprised myself with number three. I didn't think it would get this high. Psycho Circus? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no one's mentioned that yet. I, well, yeah. Oh, shock horror. Probably. Yeah. Um, number three is Destroyer for me. Um, I think, you know, I'm surprised, but, you know, it's all, all, the, all the songs. Uh, it's the songs. And you know what else is, you know, again, I, I take the cover into account on it too you know the whole package um but the songs are pretty darn good only about two two throwaways for me um on there maybe um and production i gotta give credit to bob ezrin um he he would have had the the middle part of of detroit rock city with, with the uh guitars and and he wouldn't have had Gene singing God of Thunder and then the slowed down version um, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, then again, you wouldn't have probably you wouldn't have had Beth at all either. So, but that that's not my favorite song, <laughs> even though it, it it maybe it may have saved him a little bit there. But um, it's just the, all the other songs are pretty darn good and and uh, I, it's, it just ranks up there. Um, even though I probably don't listen to it a whole lot, I really don't listen to that one a whole lot. But it's it's got to rank up there in the top three. Yeah, when it comes to not listening to Destroyer a lot, uh, yeah, the last few weeks at work, I've had two playlists going. One has been Asylum, Crazy Nights, the two songs off Smashes and Hits, all <laughs> randomized. And the one wow. the playlist I did today was. Um, Lick it up, animalize, and asylum jumbled. And oh, okay. I, I'm going to say this: I'm with Mark on asylum, and obviously, because every time those songs come in the playlist, wherever they happen to fall, they just sound fantastic. Even mixed against those two different batches of songs. Lonnie, I jumped in to your speaking zone there. I'm sorry. That's oh, all right. I don't mind. Um, my number three is Creatures of the Night. Um, I can't. I. For all the reasons you guys already mentioned about Creatures of the Night, the production on it's phenomenal. The drums just sound amazing. And like Mark was saying, it's amazing with everything, that, with the turmoil that was going on in the band at the time that they were able, that that's the product that they put out, that they got back to their roots and put out an album that was so much better than anything they'd put out in the last few years. And, and it stands up and, and it still sounds great. To this day, um, I mean, you go up and, and even even as much as we may we may make or give the band a hard time about playing, I love it loud. Even go turn that crank that up on your stereo. It just sounds amazing on that album. As much as we may be tired of hearing the song live in, in concert, that song on that album and the, the drums on Creatures of the Night in War Machine and the, and all the songs are just it's fantastic and it's one of the best produced Kiss albums ever. So yes. when you talk about um, how we sometimes think that these songs are overdone, overplayed, we're tired of hearing them, think of this. Kiss just finished uh, their tour yesterday in London. When's the next time you're going to see them live to be able to bitch about hearing one of these songs too many too many times are you going to get to see them live is a, a very good question because i think they have maybe what four shows booked at the moment and that's mm -hmm. only at the moment so you know when we think about overplayed songs it's all relative in it so strange we get to our number two pick for me kiss meet the beatles done kiss style mm -hmm. right down to the kind of ripoff cover um obviously the very different than meet the beatles cover Every single song on that album is a classic, with the exception of the love theme, which is just whatever. Uh, you know, it doesn't really count. But if it wasn't there, you'd miss it, because we're so now, you know, kind of adjusted to it. Even Kissing Time, which, uh, you know, I would love to have been a fan that that felt alien, because that was always on my album for me. Um, 
I never had a copy of the album, but nothing to lose live, though, I will say, even though I got into them in the, in the mid-'80s when that was uh, apparently there. It was not on my copies. So, first album, Under Thousand Years, Deuce. Uh, you know, if you listen to this show, you start getting to know us as fans, and we often say the same things every time we talk about albums. Sometimes, depending on our mood, our opinions vary. But everyone knows Deuce is my favorite Kiss song of all time. So, number two album. Number one song, Kiss, Mark. Yeah, so not my number two, again, was a record initially that wasn't in this position, but has been now in this position for a long while because of many things. Once I started collecting vinyl, I started noticing that I was always buying this album, various different iterations of it, RCA copy, Japanese, German, Canadian you know, you name it, I got a whole bunch of these ones. And then something else happened that changed my opinion on this record. Mitch LaFon did a really great interview with Kenny Kerner and Richie Weiss. And I listened to it and I loved it. They talked about how they went through the record, how they recorded, stuff like that, and all these little things. And I got so hooked on that little segment of the interview and listening to it. I started to really listen to it and analyze it. So, of course, you know, I got to be talking about the debut. So, and this is my Canadian quality records, Blue Bogart version of the record. I love this copy. It sounds good. The cover looks like hell. Looks like it went through like a washing machine or something. But the vinyl is good. It's nice and thick and it sounds really good. And... Like you said before, every song on this record is just incredible. And yes, it's not the definitive versions of them to some of us. Like we pick a live for some of those to, you know, compare. And, you know, but you got to think about it. When I look at it from their point of view, it was their first record. I could imagine how they must have felt going into the studio, doing their first record. They must have been excited as hell. And that I can hear. That more than anything I can hear on this record because I was there too when I did my first record. I can understand that feeling of being, holy shit, we're making a record. It's going to be fucking awesome, you know? And that kind of translates into the grooves. And I love this record. And every time I go down to listen to some records with my dog now, you know, I go, come, let's go listen to some records. First, I pull it out, boom. It's this record for some reason. It always falls into my hands, this record first. So <laughs> I love it. I never get bored of it. Number two. Kiss debut. Hey, I have to. Agree. I totally agree to that. Ken. <laughs> yeah. Um, my number two is Creatures of the Night. Um, and actually, I was kind of surprised it got that high uh, on there. But you know, uh, it, then I think about it, it's it's not too surprising um, because you know, the great cover, one of their last great album covers on there, um, songs. Only a couple throwaways on it, you know, maybe. Um, and then production, yeah, it's a 10 for me. I mean, that thing's just a great produced album, especially we always talk about the drums, and, and, and but the rest of it was well produced too. You can hear all the instrumentation well on it. Uh, there's, there's still the separation and, and, you know, and so on. So, that was a big deal for me too. It kind of brings back memories for me too, because uh, I remember getting it a couple of days before it came out, uh, before, from a person who worked at the record store. He had a copy before it was available to the public, and he gave it to me. And I remember taking it home, and man, I was like, I was very happy when I heard that. I mean, coming after the elder. Um, and Julian, you talked about certain albums that are like you said, Destroyer or whatever. It's not really a Kiss album. And it's not, you know. And The Elder is that way too. It's it's not. I, I love, you know, it's not in my top ten, but it's I I do love that album for its own its own thing. Um, so just because it's not in my top ten, I, it doesn't mean I don't like it. I I lo actually like it a lot. Um, so it's just one of those things. Um, so Creature of the Night, yep, number two for me. Good. Nice pick again. Lonnie, number two. 
Well, my number two, because Julian said I could do compilations, even though I wasn't planning on doing compilations. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Mark, Mark, Mark did have a nice Venezuelan copy of Alive a compilation. He did. He had that good copy of uh, Double of Platinum Double Plat- as well, the so. promo. Mark played by the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and the best of the solos, too. Ah, yes. Oh, solos. Yeah, indeed. And my number two is Alive. If we're going to do, if we're including live albums and compilation albums, I can't leave the original Alive album off of there. Um, it's what made Kiss a household name. It's what propelled them to be the band that they became. And the, those versions of those songs are, for the mo- for the majority of them anyway, are my go-to versions of all those songs. Um, those songs never sounded better than what they do um, produced on that album. They are absolutely fantastic, and the sound of it, is amazing from start to finish and it just it is i you know unfortunately because of our ages we didn't get to see kiss live in 75 we can only imagine what it would have been like to be there and i think alive gives us a great representation of what it must have been like and those detroit shows from 76 i guess what we have that we had on video but I think for just the concert experience itself, just to close your eyes and listen to a live. Can't imagine what it would have been would have been like to see those guys in their prime and Peter like and Peter Chris even in his prime at that point. You know what I mean? And he was a beast at that point. So for me alive is Kiss at its finest. And if you're keeping score at home, you know what all three of these guys' is number one pick is gonna be. <laughs> so go ahead, Julian. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> number one kiss icons <laughs> <laughs> to have four cds with all four members singing their songs it's fantastic and i dare you to tell me a better album. <laughs> okay yeah, I, i'm just i'm just kidding kiss symphony <laughs> No, to obviously, do a hot take on Symphony too. <laughs> ob- obviously, for me, number one, rock and roll over. Uh, you know, it, it's just very convenient that those um, demos leaked today, or well, they've been leaking since uh, the Zodiac announcement. But you know, pound for pound, that is the best sounding Kiss album with the best material. You marry the two together with an uh, iconic cover. And for me, that just wins hands down. You know, Kiss is a very close second for me, the self titled first album. Uh, if it sounded like rock and roll over, then it would be a clear cut winner because that material is far superior to anything on rock and roll over. But rock and roll over itself is just. You know, everything's downhill afterwards. You you change how they record, you change how they write, you change how they are as a band, you change everything, and it just goes to pieces to a certain extent. So, November 1976 is the high point for me in the studio. Mark. Okay, so, again, memories, memories, memories. So, two very huge memories surround this album for me. One is playing a festival, and I think I told you guys this story before, on the Azor Islands in Portugal, having nothing to listen to at this guest house that we were given to stay at, except for a copy of Deep Purple, live in Japan, and this record. And another story is I ordered this record from a dealer and, in fact, was looking for a red pie vinyl version of it. And right when I had it ordered and it was sent and shipped, we got hit with one of the biggest snowstorms in Canada. And it got lost in the mail for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I got so pissed off. And then finally, one day, it magically appeared so, of course, I'm talking about Hot in the Shade. No, I'm not. I'm talking about... <laughs> of course. Some red? Okay. Ooh, rock nice. and Roll Over. And, of course... Mm-hmm. With the pinky cover. It, it is yep. the red pie version. And yeah. what can I say about this that we haven't already said? This, this record represents everything that I love about Kiss. It's raw. Eddie Kramer produced it, not that guy from Canada. And... Um, it's every song on here I, I love. I mean, even Hard Luck Woman, you know, I, I I can I don't have to I don't lift a needle ever 
off of this record. I just put it on, listen to it, and I'm happy. And again, it has an iconic, you know, cover. We even get an awesome sticker. And our Canadian one is even different than the American one. Nah, nah, nah. So um, that's, you know, these sort of things are what stick in my mind when I think of this record, you know, going on the tour and waiting very patiently for this to come in the mail and being so happy when it finally came. Because I thought some guy in Canada post office going, dude, man, look what I found in someone's mail lot, man. You know, so I'm very happy that we have honest mailmen here in Canada and it came and this album is phenomenal. I love it. And I listen to this record a lot. Funny enough, though, I don't listen to it nearly as much as Asylum, but it is my favorite <laughs> record, though, still. Rock and roll over. Yeah. All right. Lay off the Asylum. People were just warming up to us. Um, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to have to agree with Julian and Mark. Uh, rock and roll over is number one for me. Um, for the same reasons, you know, the, the it's the way that I think Kiss should sound on vinyl, um, as a, you know, for a studio album, um, and then then the the cover, of course, is yeah, great and iconic, like Mark said, and the production, you know, Eddie Kramer did a great job. Um, the songs, uh, maybe there's only one for me that might be a throwaway, <clears throat> but I think the production itself raises the song quality. It just makes the songs better. Um, I mean, if Eddie Kramer maybe did, like I think Julian was talking about, with Destroyer, um, it would have, it would have, man, I would have loved to have heard that. But again, Bob Ezrin changed. You know, those those songs wouldn't have been the same. And structure uh, had Eddie Kramer come in and, and produce it but well shit it come on turned out pretty darn good mr speed would have had an orchestra i mean oh yeah 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 had yeah, bob Ezrin did uh, rock and roll over yeah that would have been can you can totally you can you imagine different. can you imagine bob Ezrin's take on see you in your dreams i mean there'd be oh yeah freaking hard luck woman we would have had a, a middle break with a bunch of yeah an orchestra in the middle yeah so um like a dream sequence, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I could see him doing that. But uh, yeah, so Rock and Roll Over, that's, it's a, it's just, I don't know, it's just a great album. So it's always been, or, you know, round number one for me anyway. So good one. <laughs> well, Lonnie, you get to have the, uh, the, I guess, the final word on the, yeah. our number one Kiss album. Well, it's no surprise that my favorite Kiss album is Revenge, I've mentioned on the show. So you were, you, you were just mocking us for Rock and Roll Over, and then you have the audacity to pick Revenge as yours? Well, yeah. Pot, you know, kettle, well, black? Right. And, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say about Revenge. I've, this is episode, what, 125? Six. Go back and listen to the episodes I've been on. Go back and podcast like the Duckins to the other episodes that I've been on. You can to hear all the reasons why almost every show I bring up Revenge and why I think it's the greatest. Um, I started off with Sonic Boom talking about remember about certain points of your life and for me it's obviously Revenge because I'm 14 years old when it comes out and it's so impressionable and made me jump I mentioned it, Destroyers, probably the first time I ever heard Kiss, it made me jump from being just a, a Kiss fan like yeah those guys are cool, it's the band my older brother listens to to being my favorite band so it's revenge and anybody who listens to the show already knows why <laughs> simple as that okay so before we wrap this up are there anyone's picks that surprised you any of us i i was shocked that lonnie threw out sonic boom you know as much mm, as i wanted me you know as much as i wanted to try yeah. and work some of the kind of later stuff in into my list as kind of a a matter of respect to the band's catalog, I could not get any of that shit in there. You know, there was just too much other stuff. I mean, even, you know, I, I didn't go as far as, like, having Hot in the Shade anywhere near the periphery of my, my list or Crazy Nights, but, uh, you know, Sonic Boom could easily have been a pick because of what it kind of represented. Mark, anything shock you or, you know, surprise yeah. you with yourself or others? 
Yeah, I, I was surprised that you had Asylum as low as you did, actually. I thought it was going to be too. in your top four. You know, I thought it was going to be up a, mm-hmm. a bit higher. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm not really... You know, there were some of them that did kind of surprise me. I mean, I think when Ken mentioned a few of his that I thought were lower than I thought they were going to be. Like, I, I, I was kind of surprised, I think, at the whole uh, Dress to Kill being as low as it was. Tied for 10. Tenth. Yeah. yeah, I kind of thought that that might have been a bit higher in your list. And uh, I wasn't surprised in a bad way, but I was actually impressed. I thought that Lonnie put a, put a MTV Unplugged in there. I thought that was a really inspired choice. I thought that was really good. Ken, any surprises for you? <laughs> well, I think I, I think Mark's Mark, where he, even though he didn't put uh, Destroyer in his top ten. I thought it might get in there somehow. On just, principle. Just, just not, well, yeah. Based on... Uh, just being poli- uh, maybe, politically correct. Or <laughs> minus the producer. Minus the producer. Just take the producer side. Just for the songs and the cover itself. I thought it might have squeaked in for him. But uh, he, he really has something... <laughs> Against it, so personal so. vendetta. <laughs> so I, I think I mean, a, t- after this episode, can you know that it's not going on any of Mark's lists for sure? Not going to happen. Or yeah. any or any album produced by by a certain Canadian producer. Well, you didn't have any of the three. You didn't have Revenge. No. Didn't have Elder or, or that. Elder no. or Destroyer. No. Oh my God! It's anti Bob See, Elder, I can understand not getting on anyone's list. As much as we might respect it for what they were trying, well, they were basically just trying to do Destroyer again, but, you know, they they were trying to do something artistically creative and Bob was trying to get them just to record. You know, I can understand how that doesn't appear on anyone's list because you just can't compare it really to any of the ten, any one of us, I guess, picked. Lonnie, any surprises for you? Well, my biggest surprise was that Julian didn't have any compilations on his list after he said, yeah, go ahead and do compilations. <laughs> That's psych. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, I was surprised that Julian had um, Asylum as high as he did. I thought it would, again, I thought it would be in his at least in his top four also, like Mark said. Yeah, I agree. Um, as much as Julian champions Asylum, much like Russ was champion other albums as well. Um, you know, I, I, I surprised myself with Sonic Boom. I I grabbed the CDs this morning on my way to work, and I said, that one's on top. It's like, yeah, I, 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 I do like it. So um, I, I thought, I, I think it's interesting to listen to everybody's top ten in the fact that, yeah, a lot of us have over... Obviously, a lot of us have the same overlapping picks, but to hear some of like, the standouts, like, oh, you have Dynasty in yours. Oh, that's interesting. You know, or, or um, oh, you really... I didn't know you liked to look it up as much as you did. So I, I think that was interesting. It was interesting for me just to sit here and listen to hear how you guys ranked um, certain albums. It was... I think the whole thing was very interesting. You know, uh, th- th- just sorry, it's one thing I was kind of surprised of really quick of myself is that I... Love Love Gum, but it didn't enter my top ten at all. Interesting. Yeah, I I actually ranked the actual t- the twenty studio albums, and uh, my bottom one, which kind of kind of surprised me, is Hot in the Shade, was number twenty for me. The, that really doesn't surprise me at all. I that doesn't surprise me. I think it'd be pretty close to twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, every time any of the you may have seen me on Facebook posting Winamp with when Read My Body came on the other day. I mean, yeah. Yeah, hol- I holy it. shit! When any of the songs, even some of the the good songs on that album, like Silver Spoon or King of Hearts, for you know, for my taste, I, they still make me cringe. Even though those are to me the better songs, other than Rise to It, I, I, I think what doesn't really surprise me is that we have a lot of crossover as fans but it's the again the sonic booms that you know someone picks or uh you know maybe not including dynasty that are more the conversation pieces you know but i also know that if we were going to do the same topic again next week our list would not be the same 
because with everything yeah. it's variable down to mood and what we're listening to and you know we're kiss fans we our opinions yeah. have probably changed by the end of this episode if we did yeah. pick 10 right now they'd be completely different and the and and the sounds are so unique kiss has so many different sounds throughout you know 40 40 plus years that you know it, it all depends on what kind of mood you're in if oh i really like you know i really want a 70s type of album today or i really um and i'm really digging 80s glam shit today so you know maybe, maybe crazy night does crack someone's top 10 if they're on a if they're on a kick at 80s music you know if we did this episode three weeks from now or something or smoking crack um <laughs> <laughs> you know, where whereas you get bands like Aerosmith, every song pretty much has Steven Tyler singing. He's the vocalist for the band. And when Joe Perry sings, you're like, no, Joe, don't sing. And if Tom Hamilton sings, you're like, fuck it out, blow me. You know? <laughs> With Kiss, you've got Gene's voice, you've got Paul's voice, you've got Peter, you've got Ace. You've got four distinct voices, and you've got so much diverse material. You know, that's the cool stuff. Let's wrap this up. You know, we appreciate you listening to this show. So chime in wherever you happen to listen, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on the FAQ message board or elsewhere. You know, what are your top 10 Kiss albums today? And just like Lonnie, you can include compilations if you must. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to know the rules. <laughs> there are no rules. This is Kiss. We'll, we'll check, you know... And hell, it's me. I, I can't remember the rules. It's like the terms of service on the message board. What the fuck? <laughs> Coming to me for clarity? Asking the wrong guy the wrong questions, Lonnie. Just make it up and say, this is how it's going to be, bitch. <laughs> All right. So we'd love to know your top 10. We'd love to know uh, what you think of Mark's top 10 lacking destroyer because he's always game for a little bit of Ezra and love. See if we can uh, get him, talk him around. And of course, uh, tell Lonnie how great revenge really is and you know mark and me how good a side it is so we thank you for listening which one's that ken promo a girl or pro hey one of my promos mm. yeah i'm gonna miss all my records there you go okay so we thank you for listening and we shall see you next time bye for now thank you for spending time listening to the kiss FAQ podcast today all sales are final there are no refunds if you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.